What is up, Packer fans? Back again. I gotta get me a Jordan Love jersey now. I got that one like I think like nine years ago or so. It was after the Super Bowl. Um, now it's time to hang it up and get a loved one. So kind of crazy. Like I said in the last video, it's nuts to see Aaron Rodgers go. We officially heard it today. He said he does the uh, think he will become a Jet. All the details need to get hashed out, the trade, the compensation, the players' picks, all those things. And then Aaron Rodgers does plan on being a Jet next season. We did see Alan Lazard sign a four-year, $44 million contract with the Jets. I just don't think Lazard is a wide receiver one. He may be a 2-3 on some teams, but... We'll see how he does in New York. I see Rodgers forcing him the ball because he brought him there. And then once Rodgers retires after this season, Lazard's going to be stuck in New York for three years with no quarterback. So, you know, whatever for him. I think Cobb is going to end up going there. Mercedes Lewis will probably end up going there. Those guys are both in the end of their careers. They're not so worried about retiring after their little jet run with Aaron Rodgers. So, very interesting time to be a Packer fan, to be a Green Bay hopeful, all those things. The Packers front office doing a lot of different things. Kind of confusing, actually. A lot of it's really like trying to wrap your head around what they were thinking when they drafted Love. I get it. They thought Rodgers was in a decline, so... But then Roger, Rodgers had two MVP seasons. So now, okay, now love you, sit. Now last year, they're like, oh, Rodgers, we want you, we want you, we want you. Here's $150 million over three years, even though it's kind of like one or three one-year deals. But we want you, we want you, we want you. Well, you know, they went out and got Cobb and brought him in. They re-signed Lewis. Like, like I said, they re-signed Lazard last year, the Packers did. They wanted to keep Rodgers. Season ends, we don't make the playoffs, all those things. Packers seem like they are saying all the things to keep Rodgers on the Packers after that. You know, Goody was, and Mark Murphy, and everybody was, and Matt LaFleur were saying, yes, we want him back. Rodgers kind of felt like, okay, they want me back. And then, you know, slowly it, the, the narrative changed. Somehow the Packers, you know, I don't know what it was exactly, but... I know a lot of it was, you know, seeing Jordan Love play, seeing him progress since he's been in Green Bay, seeing him this year against the Eagles where he looked really good. Like I keep saying, those throws, every one of them was pinpoint perfect. They weren't all caught, but they should have been, <laughs> for real. So very exciting to see him play. But, you know, a lot of the moving parts had to happen. And now, so Rodgers is on his way out, but... I mean, what happened? What what was the catalyst that really pushed them out the door? Was it just all the indecision again? Were they just so high on love? They were just waiting for just a little more indecisiveness from Aaron Rodgers for them to move him along. It kind of sucks, though, because we don't get the draft capital. I don't think that we would have got if the Jets believed the Packers wanted Aaron Rodgers to stay in Green Bay and felt more like the Jets were taking him away from us than they do now. Now we're kind of just like, okay, we're both done, so here. And obviously the Packers can, can say, yeah, he's a four-time MVP. You know, look at the pass yards, look at all the cat, you know, the, the cat, um, accolades and everything. And obviously the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP. So all those things, you know, he's just, he's been so great for so long. Packers really have a lot to build on, but the Jets can counter and say, well, what if we only get one year with him? What if he retires after this year or and is he's got sixty million dollars owed to him? That's a big cap hit. So there's you know, both sides have leverage, I get it. So we'll see what ends up being the case when it is all said and done, what the Packers do get in return. There's so many different options and scenarios and I've heard so many different, you know, predictions and opinions on it. So I won't even begin to guess what it will end up being. What I do know is both sides probably won't be as happy as they could have been. So <laughs> um but that being said the Jets will have Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will be moving on to the Jordan Love era. Which means, you know, Jordan Love is a kid that Nobody really knows a whole lot about since he came in as a high, you know, first round rookie COVID year. Nobody got to see him during the COVID year. People forget that he was drafted during COVID and didn't have OTAs, didn't have training camp, didn't have, you know, preseason, 
didn't really do much of anything that whole first year except for watch. You know, obviously he did, he took some snaps and stuff, but nothing real that really mattered and nothing to really learn on. So then, then the second year, which was two years ago, and then last year, and then obviously this year. So very exciting going into his fourth season now. I think he'll be able to really take that next step. I mean, the kid is 6'4". He's, you know, 220 pounds or so, but he is way more mobile than Aaron Rodgers is at this point in his career, of course. He's about as mobile as Aaron Rodgers was at the peak of his career. Maybe not as, not not the foot, footwork, not as shifty and all those things, and maybe not as elusive, but still has a lot of those tendencies and is still a playmaker with his feet. Jordan Love is going to be great now since we've had so many years of Rodgers not being as mobile as he was. I think his, you know, play kind of, you know, declined a little bit. Some of how he he played declined and him making some of those crazy plays out of nothing definitely declined. So, I'm going to I'm excited to see Love come in, bring that mobility. 24 years old, he turns 25 November 2nd, I believe. So, um I think Rodgers was in December, so now it's a November one. So, not too far away, but very exciting to see him kind of keep this progression going because of love. In 2018, he had his best season. 32 touchdowns. He only threw six picks. That was, I think he was like a, a sophomore in college at Utah State. So he was doing really good. Then junior year, he came in really touted high as a, a top prospect going into the draft. They wanted to see him do it again. This year, though, only 20 touchdowns and a career-high 17 interceptions. So you kind of saw the, the highs and lows with him there. But I think having him come in, sit behind an MVP, sit behind a Hall of Famer, sit behind Aaron Rodgers, who sat behind Brett Favre, and really learn, you know, kind of learn the nuances of the game. Obviously, there's going to be growing pains with Jordan Love. He hasn't read a, a lot of the defenses. He hasn't read coverages or blitz schemes things of that nature, and so it's going to take some time for him to really get caught up to the point where Aaron Rodgers is, but sometimes you see Rodgers, you know, call play and just get sacked instantly, and it's like, how, you didn't see anything going on there, you know, so you got to wonder how much of that really does matter, and how much of it is just instincts. Patrick Mahomes said that his first season starting, he didn't even really know how to read defenses, and Brett Favre said that he didn't know what a nickel defense was when he was coming into the lead uh, the league learning defenses he was talking like oh they just take a, a, a linebacker out and put a corner like who cares what does that even matter <laughs> you know it's just another guy in the field so kind of funny that that happened but for Jordan Love I think this this time underneath Rodgers has really allowed him to grow develop into the player that he's going to be and obviously he's going to just keep getting better and better than he is right now I really see a lot of potential in him. I have all along. I just needed to see more. I kept saying I just needed to see more. And this year, he showed me enough that I totally understand what the Packers are doing. If you keep Rodgers for one more year, you lose love for his career, basically, because he'll demand a trade. Is Rodgers for one year worth losing love? Someone you invested the draft pick in, all this time in, frustrated Rodgers with, you know, all those things, obviously it kind of pushed Rodgers to the MVPs and almost some Super Bowls, but he couldn't get out of the NFC Championship game, so maybe love, you know, in the NFC with a little bit weaker conference, Aaron Rodgers can go to the AFC, go deal with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and, you know, Justin Herbert and Joe Burrow, you know, so go, 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 and then, you know, Josh Allen in your division, and then you have the Dolphins and Obviously, Belichick's always tough no matter what, you know, so Rodgers, enjoy yourself. I don't think you guys will make the playoffs even, so it is what it is, but Green Bay, they're still in the NFC North. They're still going up against the Bears, who will we'll see what they do. The Lions, who will see what they'll, they'll, they'll do. Jamal Williams, I don't know if he re-signed with the Lions yet. I think it's still, I think he's still a free agent unless he got signed by somebody else. I'll have to check that. That is something I'm interested in because he did lead, lead the league in uh, NFL rushing touchdowns. So he's a guy that, you know, should have gotten paid, but running backs don't get paid. They're kind of getting slept on this year for sure. So it'll be kind of interesting, but maybe he'll go to the Jets. I saw something about them, him maybe going to the Jets with Rodgers, but I know him and Rodgers had a good relationship. So that'll be interesting. I do have to check that out, but... 
Jordan Love starting for the Packers could be huge. Obviously, we have the running backs behind them, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Jones took a little less money. Dillon's ready to start, you know, have a big season so he can get a, a check. He wants to get paid. So I think he's going into a contract year kind of here or maybe one of his, his option years. I'm not really sure. But I think um, he's going to want to have a big season too. So he has Jordan Love has two good running backs behind him. The offensive line, I know Bakhtiari took a pay cut. I'm not sure if they're getting ready to trade him or what they're doing, if they're going to keep him. Otherwise, I still think the offensive line can be good with Zach Tom and, and Elkin Jenkins, Pro Bowl guys. So I think they can build an offensive line to really protect Love. If they're saving a bunch of money, they should be able to sign a guy maybe if they have to, even though most of the guys are off the board at this point, the guys that are top, top free agents. But then it just comes down to the weapons on the outside and that tight end. What are they going to do? Is Robert Tanya going to go with Rodgers? Is Rodgers kind of done because his name didn't get brought up so maybe Bobby Tanyan's like well if you don't want me on the list you know so we'll see but the Packers haven't really had a playmaker at tight end since Jermichael Finley a guy that I loved but we'll see what they do there's some guys in the draft this year that can really play but some of those rookies might take a little bit of time to get going so who will they put in there right now to start maybe they will bring Tanyan back we'll see but then on the outside is what really matters Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs both looked like they had a rapport with Jordan Love at some point in the season. For Dobbs, it was in preseason, and for Watson, it was during the regular season when Love got to play, and he threw him that amazing touchdown against the Eagles. We only lost by a touchdown in that game because Love kind of, you know, almost let a comeback, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like what I see in the kid, and so obviously it's going to matter what other weapons they put around those two guys, Dobbs and Watson. I know I like Samari Toure, still kind of a raw talent, so who are they going to bring in? Obviously, they lost Lazard. They might lose Cobb now probably. So what other options do they have at receiver? Sammy Watkins, we know, is already gone. And so that kind of leaves it open for what they were going to do at wide receiver. They lost Devontae Adams, which is another big part of this that I hate. Like, they were trying to please Rodgers by paying him, which means they couldn't afford Devontae. And then Devontae's gone. A year later, now Rodgers is gone, and it's like, damn, if we could have had Devontae with love, that could have been something along with these two young guys, but we went to got the young guys without the trade. You know, we went to head Watson, so, you know, you kind of take what you take and just you got to go with it. So here we are with what the Packers are doing. The defense obviously will have to step up this season, but I'm just talking about what Jordan Love has to work with in front of him and the playmakers he has at his disposal. So it is going to be an exciting year. Probably not Super Bowl or bust. It's going to be a learning curve year for Jordan Love. He's probably going to make some amazing plays, and he's probably going to make a lot of mistakes. But either way, it's going to be a good time for us to see if he can be the guy, for the Packers to see if he can be the guy, for us to see, you know, what kind of potential he has long term. And then, you know, he'll probably he's probably going to win some games, See about the division. We'll look more into that way in the future here. No predictions on the season just yet. So, But I do think Jordan Love will be at least a top 15 or so quarterback as a first-year starter in the NFL since he's had some time to sit. And a lot of these guys coming in now, they're ready to go. They're ready to play. They might have a little bit of um, you know, some technique things to work on. Josh Allen, for, for one, or Lamar Jackson. Just some throwing motion stuff. You know, but... For the most part, these guys come in and they're pretty much ready to go. Jordan Love, really a raw prospect coming out of Utah State, but now after sitting behind arguably the best quarterback to ever throw the football, now that Patrick Mahomes is coming, it might be a little bit of a toss-up. But either way, I've seen Aaron Rodgers throw the football in midair, legs crossed, like, you know, doing some crazy stuff, even though I saw Mahomes throw it completely sideways. So, you know... It's You can argue both, but either way, it's going to be the end of an era for the Packers, for Packer fans, for Packer Nation, for the you know Green Bay as a whole. It's crazy. It really is. You know, you basically follow a guy's career 15 years, you get to learn about him, and then he just off and goes to New York. So <laughs> it's um definitely exciting, though. Also, a lot of us were waiting for this moment, kind of like, you know, he's the quarterback. That's why we love him, because he's the quarterback of our team. But if he wasn't, we probably wouldn't really care about what he's doing, you know? So we only cared because he was the Packers quarterback. So now that he isn't, still going to pay attention to how his career ends, just because we he's always going to be a Packer. But for the time that he isn't, 
you know, I hope Green Bay still wins it, wins it all. So here we go. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel.